Oh, look at that. Look at all those awesome looking guys on that screen right now. Well, except that Mike guy over there. But <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? All right. Well, we are live here on Stogie 411. And as you can tell, that handsome man who is, uh, and I'm not talking about the other Mike, with the two sets of glasses is none other than Mr. Jonathan Drew himself. How are you doing, Jonathan? I'm doing great, guys. Really appreciate you guys having me on the uh, on the line with you. No, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to uh, hang out with us two schmucks and uh, all the good people that we have in our live chat room. So it should be a fun uh, a fun hour. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Speaking of schmucks, man, what what's the difference between a schmuck and a schmageggy? <laughs> no clue. That wasn't a loaded question. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> the, the schmuck. The schmuck classification as to the schmageggy classification, that's all. <laughs> no idea uh, on this end, I'll tell you. <laughs> we said it was going to be. Jonathan, just so, for the record, so you know, everybody that follows us said it's going to be probably the craziest show we've had to date. So you got a lot of pressure on you to make this the craziest show to date. Well, you know... Uh, that's the funny thing, man. You know, a lot of the guys, I'm pretty pretty big on the new media side because I enjoy it a lot. I live in Nicaragua most of the time, dude. So for me, the new media is really good because where I can't get around as much as, let's say, Pete or Rocky Patel or a lot of the guys who travel the country. And there's a lot to be said for that, you know. For me, with all the new media stuff, it allows me to communicate with people. And, I, you know, I'm pretty strong on the Facebook. I do a little bit of Twitter, but I do a lot of the, the, the forum boards as well. So even though I don't do that much of something like this, where it's, where it's this heavy, you know, hardcore interactive, I still do a lot of new media. And, uh, you know, it's great, man. I mean, this is, this, is the, uh, this is the best thing for me. But it's funny because a lot of these guys... Uh, you know, they think of Drew Estate as such a wild and, you know, zany and over the top Drew Estate, these guys. But, you know, it's kind of funny because the real truth behind it all is we're pretty conservative, you know, where <laughs> we are. And, you know, we're, we're methodological in what we do. And, uh, you know, the company has matured. Back in the day, you know, I remember, you know, guys like Thompson Scars, Joe Silvestro coming out to visit me in Nicaragua. Oh, you must be all oh, the girls. You must. And, you know, Back in the day is one thing, but now it's it's like, you know, man, we're we're pretty conservative and we we're doing things to to under under gimmick the situation more than ever, you know what I mean, and just rely on our on our on our work at the factory and stuff. So things ain't that crazy, man. You know. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I, now, <laughs> reputation's yeah. one thing, right? Yeah, reputation is one thing, but uh, you know what? What I I admit, I'm not in Miami that much. OK, I'm here about five days a month. Now, this last six months has been different because you've had different things going on between the uh, the elections in Nicaragua and different obligations that I've had. But, you know, uh, one thing that's pretty cool is I kind of just got finished over here. We're kind of putting this office together. If you guys want to take I can do kind of a quick scan over here sure, of the sure. office. Which Go ahead. Is pretty cool. You know, I nice. got to lift up the computer and move it around. So I'm going to do my best. All right. All right. All right. It's just don't 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 disconnect <laughs> it, brother. Whatever you do. No, I won't disconnect it. It's just going to take me a second to uh, kind of find a comfortable way to to. And I think you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I come from a background. My parents are antique dealers. Okay, so I grew up, you know, with Art Deco and Art Nouveau and primitive and colonial, stickly, all sorts of shit, and everything from. You know, lights and lighting to uh, jewelry to uh, furniture, you name it, all sorts of antiques across the board. So throughout many years now, close to 16, 17 years, I've collected a lot of cigar memorabilia and cigar antiques and a lot of cigar tchotchkes that any schmageggy and schmuck would love, <laughs> especially any cigar geek. And here, you know, I have my office here and then I have an office. My, my main office, obviously, is in Nicaragua. But I have a lot of pretty pretty interesting things over here. So I'll give you I'll give you a little quick, you know, I'll show off for a second some of the the nifty cool things that, that I've cool. kind of accumulated cool. over here. So can you see any junk there or what? We see yeah, we see yeah. a little bit. Just seeing can you see like I don't know how the screen is there, but some of the things that you see right there. 
Yep. Or actually, you see that woman yep. right there? Yeah. Yep. That, that's an ashtray. That's real cool stuff. A lot of this stuff right here is real early stuff. You see this bobblehead? Yep. See that one right there? Finding one of those with the cigar in the mouth is quite a bitch, man. <laughs> and uh, this is this is where I operate it from. Yeah, you know what that's doing, right too. Got some UF 13s going out to Dion over at uh, Luzione. Nice. And. Yeah, all sorts of brand history right there of different different products. All the way, you know, some of it's mine, some of it's others, but yeah. old school style stuff. It looks crowded in there, Jonathan. So if you need to make any room, Mike and I will have no problem with helping you out with any exactly. of that. <laughs> no, man, you guys would be welcome anytime to come by. I mean, literally, this is just my little office here, but I guess I'm a big cigar geek, you know, and there's just a lot of cool shit that I've accumulated. That's Avo's hat, one of Avo's hat. I guess he gives them out to a lot of people and stuff, but I've always... Enjoy it. Different things, so. Nice. Old man Padron over there. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, I just figured I'd give you a... Cool. No, yeah. we appreciate it, man. I'm sure the viewers appreciate us. Appreciate you giving us that tour as well. As a matter of fact, you know what? Can you see me? Yeah, we can see you. Give you a little tour over here. Oh, shit. He's taking off. He's on the run. Of what's going on. Well, I don't know about the run, man. <laughs> I might like, got the run. <laughs> My mother, God bless her, it was her birthday yesterday. She made us this special soup. But here's the, uh, this is the uh, Drew Estate. I hope I'm still coming in. Am I tilt coming tilt in? it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, tilt it down some. Oh, hell. oh I think we're going to lose you. On this. Yeah, I think we're losing connection. Over here. We're losing you. Is it you. working here? We got full, full internet? Yeah, maybe, maybe not all the way against the back wall, but you can walk around here. All right, so you guys can still yep, see in yep. here or what? Yeah, I can see. It's breaking up, but we can see you. Breaking up? Well, you know, place is pretty big, I guess. But we're trying to see the inventory that we need to keep on hand. And... uh Different departments here in the in the offices. Wow! Don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> are That's working the... over here and hanging around. German. Hey, and hey everybody. And and everybody. So you can see there's all sorts of. What was that room, Jonathan? Yeah. The private stock room. All right. So this is where we do, I've only able to show you uh, the non-bonded bonded side of the uh, offices because I'm going to lose the uh, internet. Okay. But the bonded side is pretty cool. You know, with the cigar taxes now, we were fortunate to be able to do a bonded warehouse where, uh, where we don't pay the uh, 40 cents until a closer time to when we, to when we ship. Yep. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. And uh, this is pretty cool over there. It's kind of like where we do some creative in here. Some different stuff. Johnny Brooks. Some yep. of you guys know yep. Johnny? Yep. He works over here. Joey. Oh, he works there. Oh, you got to mess his desk up or something. You know, to rat to trash. Totally, <laughs> totally trash Johnny's desk. Just to see if he notices. Yeah. I should do that, yeah. right? Yeah. He'll really appreciate that. Let me get the hammer and sickle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, you know, we haven't decorated yet in the damn place because it's just been so busy and shit, but whatever. You know, man, if you make good cigars, you don't have to uh, worry so much about it, but even that's a pain in the ass. Everything's a pain in the ass these days. You got the humidity, the dryness yeah. issues right now. Go from one problem to the other. Yeah. So anyway, give you a little... Little tour yeah. there, right? Now, yeah, we appreciate it. I'm sure everybody is your, uh, appreciates it. Is your factory in Nicaragua? Is that about the same as as there? In, you're you're in Florida right now. 
yeah, we're in Florida here, but is it the same like in terms of what? Like the size, the setup, did you try to mimic it? Oh, oh. no, man. Um, this place here, we moved in here about last January. This is uh, 31,000 square feet. Our factory in Nicaragua is 96,000 square feet. And uh, uh, we're now building across the street the new factory, which is 50,000 square feet. So, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to, when you think about factories, a factory is, is not always exactly what it seems. You see, you have farms, right. you have processing center, what we call pre-industry, and then you have a factory. Each of those departments are different. So when you go to somebody's farm, you don't say, oh, I was at the guy's factory because you're at the farm. But when you go to somebody's pre-industry where they're taking tobacco and peloning tobacco and curing tobacco, fermenting tobacco, whatever the words you want to use are, you'll say I was at his factory because it's just people don't think of it as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a big factory like Pepin's factory or Nick Perdomo's factory, you're going into an area where they have peloning, pre-industry going on as well as production. Okay. okay? So you're seeing different buildings all together under one facility, which is excellent. More control, it's, it's great. At Drew Estate, you're not seeing that. When you come to the 96,000 square foot facility, you know, which is www.cigarsafari.com, when you, when you come to the factory, you're coming to just a factory. It's really not a processing okay. center at all. So it's it's quite a large factory. It's it's the third largest factory in the world. It's it's by far the largest factory in Nicaragua, and it's a pain in the fucking ass to run. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, the bigger it is, the harder it gets to to manage everything. Yeah, you know, and and uh, not just that, but you have uh, the harder it is to fund because you know there's a lot of people out there who who. Uh, who make cigars who have a factory and there's people out there who make cigars who don't have a factory and both of them are important to the cycle of of selling cigars making cigars leaf canals everything but it's a very cash intensive business it's a very hard business to get in front of they it used to be very different when i first got in you know 15 years ago to the business 1995 is when i started I moved to Nicaragua in 98, but even then, it was it's still always been a cash-intensive business, but it was a very different business. Now, it has become some real harder barriers in terms of uh, barrier to, en to enter, and I've seen some guys who've really... Uh, one of the kids who's doing a good job is, um, is Skip yep. Martin. Yep, yep. You yep. guys know Chief him, Hama. I'm sure, yep. right? Doing a great uh, yeah, he is uh, – that kid is kicking ass, man, and yep. he's trying to do shit right. He's trying to do shit right. You know, you got guys who've made it, who've done just great jobs, Dion and Pete and a lot of these guys. Uh, there's not that many of them, Rocky, obviously, but – and then you have the guys who a little longer in the business and stuff, you know, uh, uh, my generation of guys, Olivita. You know, when I say Olivita, I think of Oliva V. In Nicaragua, we call them Olivita because you have Oliva from Tampa, and then you have Ol Oliva, who's the production guys who make Oliva V and all the other great sticks. So if I say Olivita, I'm talking about, you know, Oliva cigar family. Okay. But, you know, Nick Perdomo, who's just a little bit before me. And you have, you know, you have Placencia and stuff, who many generations already. But uh, Skip is going to really do good. Yep. Skip has been... Skip's been kicking ass, man. You know, and, and he's learning though. It's cash intensive business. Cash intensive business. And I see a lot of the stuff we cracked open a box today of the Crow Magnet. And uh uh they were nice. He's aging the cigars. He seems to be really doing a good good thing. And I told him it's cash intensive. You have to really be able to plan ahead in this business if you want to make a consistent quality product and not just go for for the short term, right. which is okay too. You're gonna have guys who go for short term. Yeah. I have nothing against those guys either. Uh, just like when some people say, "Well, oh, those this is a guy or that's a guy, the cigars are not premium or super premium." That's okay because you know, uh, uh, you know, you have every 
every area of the cigar business, of the cigar market, needs to be filled. You know, from mass market to popular priced cigars, let's call them bundles, right? To premium to super premium, you need to have all the classifications, all the formats covered so that everybody at every price point can smoke a cigar and enjoy a stick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we don't really make that many bundled cigars or much in the popular price segment, but, um, you know, being in the, to be able to be in the premium to super premium position, uh, it's, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Look at your port and Twitter's blowing up on your phone. We can hear it over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, How do you know it was Twitter or not Facebook? Hey, was I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, again, we go back to that question. I can't tell you my secrets. <laughs> you guys know what you're doing, man. I like that shit. Well, listen, Jonathan, why don't we get to some questions? We got some uh, well, questions well, wait, in the I, chat room. I, I want to ask him first. Oh, he, he, look, brought up, he brought right, up about uh, Cigar uh, Safari. Now, I do want to say uh, I, th I think Drew State's website is one of the most informative websites you are around. I mean, and that is definitely a better look. <laughs> if you want to read the history uh, with Drew Estates, go to the website and read up on it. But you brought up about a Cigar Safari, and that's something you just started down to, like, what, two years ago? A year ago? No, like four oh, years now. We, the... Uh I'll tell you about it. I'll give you a quick idea. Cigarsafari.com, just the way it sounds. Tilt your you camera down a little. Drew Estate. There you go. A, there we got gotcha. you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Drew Estate were always known. You know, we started, I moved to Nicaragua in 1998. We started off in 95 with a cigar kiosk at the World Trade Center when I was in school. And when I moved to Nicaragua in 98, we released the acid line and by 2000 2001 we're rolling whatever and you know the biggest hurdle for us and something that was very discouraging for me was that people would say the acid guys even when we released natural by Drew Estate they always called it acid natural they don't any longer right. but they did you and that's exactly the point brother is that it was very very hard hurdle to get people to stop saying the acid guys and to say Drew Estate mm -hmm. And we had La Vieja Habana as a as a as a traditional cigar. You know, when we, when we already spoke about premium or super right. premium sticks, mm -hmm. when we say premium, you don't say oh premium or infused or flavored. Okay, you say premium, and in the premium, you're either going to have traditional or infused at Drew Estate. We don't do flavored. So, you know, for me, I look at it like that. Not saying premium or f infused. I say premium or traditional or infused under the premium or super premium okay. you know aspect mm -hmm. and it was very difficult for us to get people to say hey you know what Drew Estate makes a good traditional cigar because we didn't really have any good traditional cigars we had the La Vieja Habana which is a function of production mm -hmm. and that is a you know a a, a seventy thirty popular priced mixed filler stick, and we really didn't have something that that could gain us, let's say, respect or clout or whatever you want to call it, from the traditional smokers. Which I'm a traditional smoker myself, so it was very difficult to hurdle. And when we released Chateau Real, which was a nice stick, but that was just as Steve Saka came on board, it wasn't really a reflection of Drew Estate uh, because. You know, having names like Lord Tennyson and a super conservative box and all this stuff, it was a little bit, we, we, we moved a little bit outside of our strike zone, not so much that it wasn't infused, but because it really, just at that time, you were starting to see brands that were very traditional start to decline in popularity, meaning like your typical dress box, whether it be Partagas or a lot of the different, I don't want to get into any, any brands in particular, but that was the beginning of the decline there from a traditional standpoint. That's something we could talk about a little bit later. But the important aspect, a lot of people say, you know, it was Liga Pravada that changed your company, okay? It was Liga Pravada that made people believe that, wow, Drew Estate can make a traditional stick. But really what I always say, and you know, and I believe this, is that it was Cigar Safari that really opened the door for Liga Pravada. 
You see, when we started September 28, 2008, to bring people to Cigar Safari as a program, it's a 16-person tour, and we'll get to what Cigar Safari is in particular. But when we started bringing people to Nicaragua to the 96,000-square-foot facility, let me tell you something. We had 11 factories up to that point, and we had closed them all except for two, the big one and then a small processing facility, which we still have. That's the one I told you. The, the new facility is 50,000 square feet, and uh, that one is replacing the old 10,000 square foot one. And it was really when people came and saw the tobacco, when people came and saw the rollers and the production, at that time in 2008 when the, when the market crashed, we were up to 75,000 premium sticks a day. You understand? We had to fire 180 people after the crash because we were about 2 million units overproduced. You had S-chip, 2 million cigars overproduced, S-chip, and we, every, you know, everything, wherever the whole world was going out of business. We were watching the stock market go down 800, 600 yeah. points a day. Yeah. It was crazy. So we had to rebuild. We dropped down to 49,000 sticks per day, and since then we've rebuilt up now to, to a good amount. We're uh, on long filler premium sticks. We're over 80,000 sticks a day, and that's why now our lunchroom at the cafeteria, some of these guys who, who, are, who are maybe watching or listening or whatever have been to the factory, that whole big 5,000-square-foot lunchroom, that's gone. That's production now for, for Java Mint. And we've outgrown the facility which is pretty amazing for a bunch of fucking knuckleheads you know <laughs> so cigar safari has been around a while dude and and we've brought over a thousand people to nicaragua on cigar safari when you think about it we uh we do about 16 tours a year that are a three night four day tour and since 2008 we've done so it's 2000 wait 2009 2008 or 9 9, 10, 11. So we've done a whole bunch of tours there. And then we have, you know, every time Pepin has a tour down pretty much, John Gonzalez or Pepin, they always spend one day over at our factory and we do the same with them. And, you know, a lot of guys come down from other factories as well and come do tour at, at Drew Estate. It's set up for tourism, national tourism, tourism through Cigar Safari, international tourism. So you see, you know, that show Survivor? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They did a tour at our place while they were there. We clipped one of those fuckers for like 1200 bucks. He bought all sorts of shit. <laughs> you know? So Cigar Safari is a real deal, and we treat it as cigar t what we call cigar tourism. It's separate from just, you know, trying to... There's no income stream for us. We charge 650 bucks for three nights, four days. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's not for us an income stream. It, our cost is about five, five hundred and fifty bucks a person. For us, it's you know we pick you up on the tour bus, we go from there. Big lunch at the uh, Bacanero Hotel. I mean restaurant. From there, we go to Grenada. We do a cool boat tour and all sorts of shit. We come back to Managua where we sleep now. We used to sleep in Grenada, and in Managua, we do, uh, we do. Uh, uh, a really good dinner at a place called San Juan del 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 uh, San Juan. Um, uh, <laughs> San Juan de la Selva. So we do a dinner there, which is a first class place, and then we sleep at a place called Barcelo Hotel. So the first night is just a great, you know, fun night tourism. And then uh, some of the guys go out afterwards in Managua, and that's cool. And then the next morning, we get up early. We head out to Esteli. It's about a two-hour ride. By the time we get there, we get to the factory. The factory's perched up on a mountaintop. And uh, below the factory, about 100 feet down, are all tobacco fields, and which Omar Ortiz owns. And then all of the uh, curing barns are there. We're basically looking down at Omar Ortiz's farm. And all the curing barns are on the left side, and there's a stream that goes through it, and on the right are all the horses and cows. And we're perched up high, and it's a uh, 11 cabanas, 14 bathrooms, a big pool, not a big pool, but a big pool area, and a double-decker uh, townhouse that has all the flat screens and areas for, you know, poker and all that shit. So it's really a deluxe tour, man. There's really no cigar tour that's like ours because of the facility and because of the... You know, we we know what we're doing when it comes to tourism. So there are other tours that are as good as ours, but there are more wild tours. Rocky's tours are a wild-ass <laughs> tour. You know, people are going nuts. 
ours is a much more, uh, let's call it, it's probably the most prestigious, refined tour that you're going to take. The rooms are really classy, flat screen TVs, air conditioning, splits, cable, you know, everything. Plus, it's just the food quality. Everybody knows the best food you're going to get in Nicaragua is a Drew Steak because I'm a fat fuck, so we always got good food. And, you know, so we take the tourism very seriously because, you know, it is a form right. of marketing. Right. You know Agreed. what I'm saying? Yep. And also, you got to understand something else is that a lot of these guys, you see guys like, you know, Dion and guys like Pete for sure and, and uh, Andre and a number of the guys who bring a lot of legitimacy to the younger generation, let's call it, of cigar manufacturers or brand builders out there. And, and uh, Willie, you know, a lot of these guys, Sean, uh, numerous guys. And it was a challenge when I started because you didn't have this crew a young guy like Tim Osgener his father's been in the business 50 years Carlito Fuente his father grandfather great grandfather uh, Jorge Padron same thing um, you, you know uh, Placentia I remember you know running into Nestor Jr and, you know we'd be drunk bumping into each other in a bar somewhere in Esteli shooting the gun in the air you know like clowns i look at him now he's one of the best tobacco guys in the business from any country nestor jr is unbelievable and to see how he's matured and and it took a lot of work man everything we've had to do we've had to, i feel like we've had to work twice as hard because we've always had that reputation as the acid right. guys you know and now like i said because of cigar safari and then eventually liga privada and hopefully we'll have the continued success we've had you know for very fortunate luck or whatever you want to call it with with undercrown so i think that there's some really good opportunity for us to continue to develop that side of our business while not losing touch with who we are and staying in our strike zone because chateau real is not a clear and good representation of of what it is to be you know to be drew state mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so so uh we were making the patches back in the day. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, I know I talk a lot of shit, man. I'm sorry. Hey, that's fine. Oh, you're good, brother. Go. It's fine. It's it. Listen, you're you're making our job a lot fucking easier. That's Hell what yeah. I'm telling we you right now. We asked Listen, what two we're questions? Perfect. We're doing good. I mean, yeah, hey. so far. Well, let's. We're gonna I'll stop you. Ear bleed, bro. We're gonna stop you and ask the question. We're gonna ask a question from a BD cigar smoker. He wants to know: Do you have a favorite of your line, and what's your favorite size cigar? Uh, well, in terms of favorite size cigar, uh, that changes, let's be honest, okay? It used to be back in the cigar business, when you would think about it historically, people smoked, you know, H. Upman Lonsdales. The taxi driver would pull up to the store in New York City or California, wave out, you know, Gloria, threw me, they would come running to the car and throw a, a box of uh, a, H. Upman Lonsdales into the window of the taxi cab driver, and he'd go pay him by check the next day, whatever, right? <laughs> it was a different time. You'd go in to get your Macanudo Portofinos, and that's what you'd smoke. These days, you know, and again, this is the same thing. I, I have a couple of themes I, I always like to talk about at Cigar Safari Tour, and that's a whole thing that I'm trying to explain to you is that, you know, the most important thing for Cigar Safari for us is that, that people can understand just because the telephone has been around a long time, it doesn't mean that that's better than the Internet. The Internet took shit to a whole new level. Look what's going on right here. So just because you say, I honor the traditional history and the traditional aspects of cigar making, mm -hmm. there's nobody who, who outdoes what we do at True Estate when it comes to tobacco. You can work broadleaf one way, and I can work a Habano seed from Nicaragua another way, and, and Oliva family or ASP can work a Habano from Ecuador another way, and everybody can have a skill set and a special talent or something that they're specially interested in. But you see, at True Estate, you got to, when you conceive the way we operate, it's you got to say to yourself, this is a company who's not saying, hey, we're second best or we're third best. That's, that's not what's going on over here. And people who've been to Nicaragua and who know me, who know the factory, who know what we do with tobacco, they understand what I'm talking about, is that we're not on a limited basis. If you study, if you study your lessons and you understand and you put in the time and you live in Nicaragua, I ain't lived ever since 1998 anywhere but at the factory. I'm not talking about like a block from the factory or in another country and you come in once a quarter or once a month or for three days a quarter. No, I live in the factory 
since 1998. I live in Brazil. I'm between the Brazil, Mexico, Nicaragua triangle. It's a permanent situation. So we're hyper accelerating in what we do, and that's why we're doing what we do. Because not only is pe- not only are we doing it, but we're showing off what we do in a classy manner through Cigar Safari and through our brand product, you know, what we do and, and going into the stores and, you know, being part of the store community. Really, brother, I tell you, it's something I take a lot of pride in because, you know, we're, as, as, as Skip says, we're the truth. <laughs> we, we're, we're living it and it's, it's not a game, man. It's, 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 we're taking it real serious and we're young in the game. But we're breaking boundaries, and that to me is when you talk about cigar size. I don't, you know, I don't really give a shit about a cigar size in particular. I like a five by fifty, a six by fifty-two. I like what this kid did over here from uh, New Havana Cigars. You guys know Dan? No, no, I don't. No. You guys know that we released a cigar called My yep. Uzi Weighs a Ton. Yep. Right. Yep. That's what we call the Muat. Or the Uzi, whatever. That's a sixty ring gauge niche product. Yep. That was a fun product to do. That's not something that's a real income revenue generator for us. We've put it in one hundred and seventy seven stores because it has a display box that I, I want to, the stores to have before they get the sticks. So what happens is, is that it's only sixty ring gauge. So we were working on this four by forty four. It's called Bait Fish. Can you see yep. that? Yeah. That's a four by forty four, which that's a beautiful size. You know what I'm saying? Do I smoke a 60 ring gauge? Not that much. It was because of Dion. I like that 68 that Dion does that I really got into that ring size. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Cabe Guan does when it's more like that too that I like a lot. So ring size to me is not, is not you know, the, the size of the, you know, the format. Let's call it the Vitola, right? You guys, when you say a Vitola, you're talking yep. shape and size. Yep. So all of these things are important to me. But really, I look at things from, a, you know, for, things are in flowing motion. We are not in a stagnant situation over here. You know what I mean? Yep. Sometimes I rhyme slow. Sometimes you <laughs> rhyme quick. <laughs> Shit, that's what I'm fucking. What was the other part of that question? Do you have a favorite of of your line? Do you have? Is there one particular one that you're? Is your yeah, by far T52 uh, Toro. Uh, the T52 line uh, is to me. One of the better products that 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 are on the market right now, I think that you know me personally, my list of favorites is is, you know, it's Nicaraguan based. I'm I'm a Nicaraguan smoker. That's what I choose much more than Dominican tobacco, much more than Honduran. Although, a lot of the brands these days that I smoke are used, you know, are are Honduran made cigars at the Raices Cubanas factory. But made mostly with Nicaraguan tobacco. I like a lot of what, what's going on at Raices Cubano, the uh, Agonorsa leaf, and the the, the, the Dion's product Illusione is definitely one of my favorite. Alan Rubin is doing a great job with his Tempest, and some people like Prensado or Family Blend and this and that. I I I think the Tempest is a really really great product. Yep. And then of course Nicaragua, the base right is is really where it's at in terms of where what i smoke and what i would suggest to people who want a full-bodied uh whether full-bodied full strength or full-bodied medium strength you know if you want to go over the top you're going to whether it's way de nicaragua or or whatever you got you got nicaraguan tobacco from oliva to perdomo to of course padrone to uh pepin is killing it he's doing some incredible things what he's doing now you see, Ecuador Habano tobacco, when you think about that, that tobacco, you have to historically look at Ecuador. Ecuador is ASP for Connecticut Shade Tobacco, and you think of, you know, Andy Perez, uh, David, now David Perez, the Perez family, uh, for Connecticut tobacco from Ecuador. But when you think of a stronger Ecuador tobacco leaf that's historically been sought after, which like what's used on, on the uh, VSG, that is a what a Sumatra leaf, okay? It's a Sumatra seed grown in Ecuador, but you can grow Sumatra seed all over the world, right? Yes, you right? can. Yeah, growing Sumatra seed all, all over the place. You can grow Sumatra in Indonesia, Sumatra in Mexico, Sumatra in Brazil, Sumatra in Ecuador. Sumatra is a seed variety of which there are different types of Sumatra seed varieties, but 
that has always been Oliva growing family, not Olivita, and they have always made VSG style material, and it's always been in high demand. And it's a good tobacco, full bodied, strong, gives you a lot of spice, gives you everything you need. Now, back. In 2001, 2002, I can't remember the exact year, you had uh, you had the Savinelli Nicaraguan Reserve came out of Don Tiki's factory, right? Which was a very special tobacco, and I'm not sure how much Christian Oroa's father had to do with it, but it was a uh, it was an interesting time. I think that he did. We started to work with the Ecuador Cameroon seed, so it was a Cameroon seed grown in Ecuador, while Tiki started off with this seed, which is a Habano seed grown in Ecuador. Also, Oliva growing family doing both, and I believe the seeds came from Camacho's dad, you know, from Christian's pop. So, while ours, they limited it to eight bales, we bought them all and uh, it was it had shitty yield, so it didn't continue. But the Ecuador Habano, which was used originally on that Savinelli Nicaraguan Reserve, uh, forget the rating from Scar Aficionado, it got a high rating, but it was a good stick, and then Kiki got sick. From there, the production of that tobacco, of that cigar, went over to Oliva, uh, Olivita. And with that, they, I believe the first year that they used the Habano seed grown in um, Ecuador, uh, I believe that product was Master Blend for the first year that they used it in the Master Blend 1. And they became very attracted to the material, and they realized that, you know, the material has a Cubanesque feel to it, like what you would call it a, a Cohiba Cafe color. And it's very Cubanesque in look and is very Cubanesque in taste. So you started to see the beginning of a very important documentation in history of tobacco history. When you think of Corojo tobacco, you you cannot overlook the Aroa family. That is Corojo tobacco. And for a long time, whether it was Punch Rare Corojo or La Vieja Habana, Cuban Corojo, it was all, it was all bullshit. It wasn't necessarily the the Corojo that when you said Christian and Camacho had, that was Corojo rapper. I mean, remember that? Huh? Remember that? That was from 1997, 98. This stuff here, I was just showing that to Steve Saka, is, uh... Yeah, the ghost face. Oh, yeah. You know, that... that <laughs> yeah. Ghost face. So, right. So, anyway, uh, what... You can't think about tobacco and talk to me without getting uh, talking about history. It's impossible. And when you ask me what's my favorite cigar at Drew Estate, it would be difficult for me to, to without chronologic, uh, how do you say, chronicalizing Ecuador Habano, the development of that Ecuador Habano, and then referring in that manner with T52, which is a Habano seed grown in the Connecticut River Valley, like broadleaf. Like my man Pete, he's all infatuated with broadleaf tobacco. Me too. I understand why he has that infatuation, and he's doing some fantastic shit with it. I mean, it's hard to keep up with this guy. He 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 is understanding the beauty of the broadleaf, and that is my point. When you grow broadleaf tobacco, where you're growing it and how you're growing it has a lot to do with the the future of of that segment of tobacco and that's why t52 is is worth talking about and understanding and to understand that you have to talk about what tobaccos have been relevant in the last 10 12 years because that's our segment you guys are young guys if you want to go back further we can go back further but for me you start thinking already at camacho corojo you're starting to think at a time period where they made a change they made a difference they broke the boundaries and created the best product on the market. Camacho Corojo was it. That was the game changer. Period. Of course, Arturo Fuente, Carlito Fuente, and the, and what they did with Opus X. My knowledge on that is 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 limited. When we talk about Ecuador Habano, I think what Pepin is doing now. I think that this guy's got the touch, and I think that he's doing. He took the flame, the passed the flame along from uh, from. The progression of Ecuador Habano as a grower, of course, thinking back to Oliva growing family, from Kiki to Oliva, who continues to do a great job with it, to, um, I mean, there was a f fucking war to get that tobacco. And eventually, you know, to, uh, Pepin became very close with the with uh, Gustavo Cura and with, with, uh, with Oliva growing family, and they wound up getting the line on the uh, Ecuador Habano. 
and they've done a great job with it. So now you can basically get that seed uh, grown on, on different farms, one of them being Oliva growing family and the other one being a Perez. So where they kind of were separate in the past, if you wanted Connecticut, you'd deal with David Perez and you'd deal with Ecuador, Connecticut. When you wanted a Sumatra VSG style tobacco, you would deal with Oliva growing family. They both now grow this Habano. So what we spoke about in regard to Sumatra tobacco, you can grow Sumatra tobacco all over the place. Mm. You can grow Habano tobacco. You talk to Nestor Sr., he's going to talk to you about Habano until your ear is bleeding. Because the history of Habano tobacco, it's not just where you are now. It, 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 there's an evolution to things that, that are important to be understood. And Habano tobacco in Ecuador is fascinating to me. We just got 25,000 pounds of it. We selected it down to 8,000 pounds. Uh, I believe uh, 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 at the factory they're working on some different blends, whether it's Undercrown or Liga Privada or the Willie Herrera pr project. I know that it will be coming pretty soon. Uh, the Ecuador Habano will be, will be coming out. But, you know, right now Pepin, he's got the touch on that and, and other guys too. Uh, I know that Skip is doing something with the Ecuador Habano. I'm sure that's going to be a very interesting, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, maybe a, um, a sophomore run for him. Mm -hmm. He's going to he's gonna do something good with that, I'm sure. But T52, we had a year right now, 2011, from January 2011 to now. We shipped 600 boxes of T52. That's why when I asked you, where'd you get that T52? You can't get it nowhere. It's the, we shipped 450 or 600 boxes in August. You see, when you do a broadleaf, you do a broadleaf, like Liga Provada number 9 is not just broadleaf. Mm -hmm. Liga Provada number 9 is a Ligero broadleaf, right? Huh? Yes. You follow I'm following me? with you. Go yeah? Ahead. Yeah, we're with you. Go ahead. So, talking Seiko or Viso or Ligero, you're not just talking about right. filler, right? Yep. You're talking about rapper too. It used to be when you talked about broadleaf, you would say number one long seconds or number one long, uh, it, it was mediums. No one uses that old Dutch style of bullshit anymore to talk about a rapper. What you're really looking at is, 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 uh, what you're really looking at is a Seiko, a Viso, or a Ligero because you're going to use texture to define what it is you're looking at in terms of a tobacco. So the T52 has a long, long, drawn out amount of information that really needs to be understood and we went a year without shipping it which kind of sucks but you know with the Liga Privada it was the thickest most densest that T52 was just unbelievably thick so instead of taking two years where Liga 9 you know when we're just using a Ligero the Seiko and the Viso I'll sell it whether it's Pepin or trade it whatever it is the 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 Liga na, uh, the the broad leaf material, of which you know, people don't want to pay for that material, but guys who really use it the right way, like Pepin, they understand it's worth the money because you can make some cigars that that taste. You can get the taste out of that broad leaf, and a lot of that has to do with the soil being in the Connecticut River Valley, and that's where the T fifty two is grown. It's stalk cut, stalk cured, you know, which is different than a tobacco that's primed off the plant. So the T52 is something that I, at this particular point where I think we're most proud of. And it's just a shame that I had to go this year. And the only thing I've been able to get to get to its full cure and, you know, get through the curing process completely and shipped has been a thicker Seiko. Now we have the Viso getting ready. We'll be shipping that towards February, thank God. And then sometime towards the end of the year. It's probably going to be about two and a half to two years and eight months. Three years. It's going to be three years before we get out the Ligero. I mean, that gives you an idea of how thick the material is. And what the thicker a tobacco is, what does that mean? The Ligero? It's going to be even stronger, right? Well, it's going to be stronger is one thing. But the, the thicker it is, the longer you can process it, right, in a pilon. You're taking your tobacco. If you have thin tobacco and you're putting it in a pilon, you say, hey, I'm going to put a big pilon, a big pile of tobacco to, to cure it, and I'm going to put my seco with my viso and my ligero. Well, what's going to happen? If you leave all those three classifications together in one pilon, well, the seco is going to be ready first. 
So what do you do? Take out the Seiko? No, you're going to fuck the pilon. You got to separate them into a Seiko pilon, a Ligero pilon, a Viso pilon, because what's going to happen is your Seiko, eventually, you're going to cure it so much that when you go to put it, it's going to look black. It's going to be thick. I mean, it's going to be dark. It's going to be beautiful tasting. But when you put that on the on the on the board to roll with it, what's it going to do? It's going to snap. It's been cured too long. It's gotten thinned out, and it loses its the fibers. You can hold it up to the light. When you hold that tobacco up to the light, the light's going to come through. You see little tiny pinholes. That's because it's been processed too long. Same thing. Go to a ligero. You process a ligero too long, and, and I mean too short, because you want to get it out at the same time as the seco and kill the bulk, the pilon. Well. It's going to burn real black on the edge, if not burn at all, because it's been under-cured, under-fermented. Things, texture of your tobacco is going to determine how long that tobacco will be able to go through a fermentation period in a pilon process. Mm -hmm. Using heat, using water, and using airflow to process a tobacco to get it to its full, brightest potential. That's the beauty of the T52, is that it's a bright tobacco. It's a very bright tobacco, and you know, and you can do that with a with a heavy seco of viso and certainly a ligero. Where with a broadleaf, you're going to get a great seco from a broadleaf. You're going to get a great viso from a broadleaf, and there's different cigars that justify both. But go all the way to a super gigantic ligero broadleaf. That's Bombay. Hmm. Now on that new feral flying pig, that's a medium. That I believe is not a fully head or broad leaf. That that's a that's a that's a viso. Okay. So you know it all depends on how you 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 treat your wrapper with your filler blend, you know, and your binder as a as a as a complete, you know. As See, a complete no, I, admit, I, I didn't know all that. So what I, other I question? I didn't know everything about all yeah. that. I, I really didn't. Look at that. See that we're we got learning a today. That's good. we are. Let's uh, Jonathan. Let's take another question from. Uh, Jersey J had a question about. Oh, the- fuck Jersey J. Listen, <laughs> Jersey J. He said he wants to know uh, when the Corona Gordo's coming out for the My Uzi Ways a Ton. First of all, Jersey J is one of the best <laughs> photographers of, of cigars. That guy's got the touch for. Ta- he's, a, he's a great blogger. He's a great friend of mine and a uh, good kid. Um, we, him and I always have uh, funny conversations because we were together at Little Taste of Cuba. You guys know Jorge Amateros? No. I don't Taste know him, but I heard of him. You know him. You know him. Tobacconist University. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he was at my time when I got in as a retailer with my store at the World Trade Center after the first bombing. Jorge took me in to kind of teach me the ropes. He already had his Princeton store, Little Taste of Cuba, and he was now starting on his New Hope store. His New Hope store had already opened. I came for the opening weekend or two weeks after, and uh, I had kind of – him and I hadn't spoken for about 10 years other than when old man Padron would come over. But we got back to getting together you know, a couple of years ago, and uh, Jorge is a, a cool guy. We, Jay came to his store when I did an event there last year and this pipe guy comes in and he's smoking a pipe and i'm like this guy's you know looking at all the uh, liga privada and he says he in jersey jays with me he said hey do you guys have a toro i said certainly sir you know if you guys know me i'm pretty generous you know i i always treat people to, to stuff and i i enjoy that but i also know that from time to time there's going to be somebody who's just wasting your time and it's not just a matter of making a sale it's just being you know goofy so this guy's like he's looking at the cigars and i said here's the toros right here and he i hand him one i go he go, <laughs> said you could go pay for it over there and the guy was like pay for it <laughs> so jersey J, him and i always call each other the toro guy because <laughs> the the guy who was like trying to he had the pipe guy he was trying to fucking vic a toro <laughs> What was his question? He wanted to know if on the uh, Miozzi weighs a ton, is the Corona Gordo coming out? Are you going to do it? Uh oh, insider info. <laughs> Come on, Come uh, on. Uh oh, <laughs> uh oh. He's got to, he's got to go check the legal papers first and say, okay, can I can, say can anything? Can I take him into this room? Oh, we're Hang going on. on another tour. Wait a minute, we're going on another no, no, no. tour. No, I see. Hang on, guys. Yeah. yeah, this is what you got in Uzi coming out. Look at this. Sneak peek. So these are some of the uh, 5x52. 
Then we got in the Uzi at five by fifty. This is the um, you know the medium blend. Uh, also the the uh, the uh, Mexican tobacco uh, wrapper. Uh, this is an interesting size right here. This here is, you see what we call a bullet head? You know how Hoya de Nicaragua has that mold to do oh, those yeah. bullet heads? Yep. So this is a bullet in the six by, so this is a six inch bullet head where typical, when you get a grand console from Hoya, that's a four and three quarters. So this is a Uzi in a six inch with the bullet head. This is a five inch with the bullet head. And then you have, you know, the, the bait fish was a four by 44. This one, my boy's been smoking this one over at, uh, this is the six by 46. So the Corona Gorda, you know, you go, what do you guys call a Corona Gorda? Five and five eighths by 46? Six, yeah, around there, 46, 48, yeah. I don't see that one up there, so I don't know if we're going to do necessarily a Corona Gorda. We're going to start off with that six by 46. And try and get this, uh, try and get that six by forty six out, and try and get uh, this guy, man. I shipped him a bunch of the bait fish. Four by forty four. Tell Jersey J to snag himself those. He can hear you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Can? Oh yeah, he can. Everybody can hear you oh. live. Everybody can hear every fucking thing you're saying, brother. You think anybody's listening to this oh, shit or what? Yeah, they're, oh, they're shit. Listening. They're listening. Trust me. You should see the chat. Yeah? The one guy said he went and took a shit and came back and you were still talking about the same subject. Hey, that's what I always say. <laughs> Listen, if you got to call your grandmother, take a shit, <laughs> do anything you got to do, go and do it because I'll be here talking, making your ear bleed. <laughs> so Jersey J, you know, that guy's a good guy, man. Yep, I agree. I agree. Coming along with that stick. We're getting those sizes done first. You know, you want to know something crazy? Yeah, go ahead. You still there? You st oh, I'm oh. thinking. All right. Hang on. When you think about, when you think about tradition, you think about consistency. Yes. Right? Mm hmm When you think about the concept, not just of limited edition, not the way Pete does it, because, you know, I mean, Pete does shit right. Just in terms of the idea of consistency against limit, limited, right. right? Yep. One of them is limited. When you think of a product that's limited, means it's you can only make so many of them, or it's only available in so many stores, or you only make it a certain time of the year. When you make a product that's consistent while it may be limited because you can only make so many of them or whatever the case may be you, it those that that equilibrium is something that i think is very important to recognize as a brand owner or as a manufacturer of a cigar or a, of a of a producer of tobacco so we released liga Pravada four years before releasing undercram means we went Four years with no new cigar. Yeah. Most of these brands that have come out, whether they own a factory or not, you're coming out with two, three, four, five brands a year. Yep. Right? Yep. There's guys who own factories who are coming out with 10 or 20 or 30 brands a year. And I don't have a problem with that because, again, every function of the tobacco business is important. The way we do things is there's nothing to do with good or bad or whether it's better or worse. That's not my point. If people know me know that's how I am. I don't care. But for us, we went four years since releasing Liga Privada to the next stage in Underground. So I'm in no big rush to just keep releasing things and releasing things and releasing things because, you know, that's not my strategy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's... Although I am excited about the Willie Herrera product. Yeah, I had the 7x60 uh, seven, seven Muwa. I don't got to do it. I just smoked one of them not too long ago. I loved. I, I love how. Oh, it, how was that? Thing? I love the length of time it takes you to smoke it. I mean, I, I'm looking for a cigar that I can sit here for like three, four hours and just smoke away at. I love it, dude. Let me tell you something. That that thing is a that cigar seven by sixty. Jesus, that is. When you're done with that, you've taken in a bunch of nicotine, man. <laughs> he was probably he's 
He was probably he can't handle those strong ones, Jonathan. He was probably laying down. No, yeah, he had body. That's Who's strong. He? No, no, that's no, strong no, for no, him. No, that was it. It was medium. Yeah. Now it got stronger towards the end, but no, I mean, yeah, it was. Well, it definitely yeah. graduates. But yeah, that's. It definitely graduates. You know, that's another thing. Nicaraguan cigars. A lot of people who manufacture Nicaraguan cigars, uh, they either have blends or brands or whatever, where you know it starts off real strong and then it'll come down in strength. Mm. Where I really don't like that uh, as a consistent product. I like it where it either graduates in strength or at least remains the same in strength level. And again, don't mix up complexity with smoke texture. Smoke, what you, what you either call texture or, or, or um, you know, at the time of you're smoking something. I like something with a lot of texture. Uh, when, when at the time that you're bringing in the tobacco, <clears throat> is there a depth? let's call it to it. So in other words, sometimes using a Connecticut binder, you can bring up a lot of depth or Brazilian tobacco for sweetness. Mm -hmm. So a layered approach to, to it. So that has nothing to do with the complexity as you're smoking the cigar. Does the cigar change in taste? Does it get stronger or milder? That's complexity. Totally different situation than depth. And, you know, the Uzi is not a uh, overly complex cigar. It's not going to change much from the time you smoke it to the end. Okay, or the new ones will, the, the bait fish, those do. New Havana cigars, that's a good, good one. He's a little guy, you know, little little uh, brand owner. He's, he was college roommates with Pete Johnson. Yep. So NHC.com, NewHavanaCigars.com, uh, I'm proud of that guy. I've only got to know him recently. The only thing that he carries of Drew Estate is that one thing. But um, that cigar is actually pretty complex for a 4x44. And complexity, there's when you're smoking a 60 ring gauge cigar, I don't believe that you're smoking a 60 ring gauge for complexity. I believe when you're smoking a 60 ring gauge, you want a bazooka of flavor, a bazooka of depth, and a real, a lot of smoke, which is what we're known for. Our cigars produce a lot of smoke, a lot. Yeah, the smaller sizes, you'll Fact. get more, I mean, with the complexity, just, I mean, there's just more wrapper and binder and everything else, but, and I do want to ask before, uh, before we throw another question, you were talking about the broadleaf tobacco. Have you, have you ever messed around with anything? Uh, I live real close to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, I know, I think Rocky does a lot with Lancaster tobacco. I can't remember who it is that, that uses a lot. I, I think it was him. But I didn't know if you ever messed around with any of the broadleaf from here or not. You know, remember, so when you say Lancaster, you got to be careful about the way you think about it. But let's talk about Pennsylvania. When you say broadleaf, right. right? When you think about broadleaf tobacco, there's different varieties of broadleaf tobacco. When you talk about Pennsylvania, you're referring to what's called Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Dutch. Okay? Pennsylvania broadleaf is not Connecticut broadleaf. Okay. You understand me? I got you. Connecticut, Connecticut River Valley is like fucking Pinar del Rio. Right. Okay. You're talking about when you're in Cuba, you're in one part of the country, you get one type of tobacco, a wrapper, a binder tobacco. Another part of the country, you're just going to be in an area called Oeste, you're going to get a filler tobacco, let's say. And I'm not an expert on Cuban tobacco. <clears throat> but when you're talking about the Connecticut River Valley, bro, that's like walking into Tiffany's. And asking if they have a fifteen dollar necklace. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? Yeah. You don't go into Tiffany's and say you want to get your girlfriend a fifteen dollar necklace, right? Right. Right. Go to Tiffany's. You gotta bring a few dollars and then you know step up. Me personally, I don't shop at Tiffany's, but I do shop in the Connecticut River Valley. Now, in terms of Pennsylvania Dutch tobacco, there's nothing wrong with it. Again, every classification is important for tobacco. Mass market, popular price, premium, super premium, they're all important. And as well as smokeless, very important to Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania Dutch. The guy who you're thinking about who, as you say, messes around with that is Adele Fernandez. Okay. He does, uh, AJ, he does uh, a lot of experimentation with Pennsylvania Dutch tobacco. And he's also another guy who's done some incredible things. Uh, uh, in a short period of time, he's in my old factory, which was Nick Perdomo's factory before I got it, and then he took it over after me. 
Mm-hmm. And um, we call that the Lucky Factory, me and Nick and AJ. And he has done some pretty cool stuff. He's made some brands for Cigar, uh, Cigars International. Right. Right? Yeah. With the Pennsylvania Dutch. And he's done a few blends for Rocky. I don't know how much of Rocky's business is still there at that factory. As you know, you know, uh, uh, he works with Nestor Placencia as well as the General Cigar Company with uh, AJ Fernandez. And now with Amica, who uh, runs the, their factory together. So I don't remember at this point what whether Rocky is is doing that, you know, there or not or, or whatever. Forgot. So Pennsylvania Dutch is a different thing, man. I don't mess okay. around with that, nor will I. Ooh. Let's see, uh, Jonathan. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you, I thought I saw an interview somewhere where you you said that the original name Drew Estates you changed it to Drew Estates Tobacco. Is that correct? Yeah, we went. And why? Recently- Originally from Jonathan Drew yep. to Drew Estate, and then from Drew Estate, uh, Drew Estate uh, Cigar Company, and then a couple of years ago we switched to uh, Drew Estate Tobacco Company, and uh, we did that because, just like a child, we maturing right. Yep. And uh, we did that because. Drew Estate is is turning the corner from the acid guys to the Drew Estate guys. I mean, we're working with a number of different tobaccos. That's that's of course heavy leaf is where my heart is at, right? Yeah. But it's not the only thing that we're working with. It's not the only part of tobacco that I'm trying to get a fuller understanding of. So we're doing a lot of things. There's a new paradigm, man. Eh? Mm-hmm. Tobacco is in a new paradigm right now. You are experiencing the beginning, not of the end. All right? It's not the end. It's the beginning of the new paradigm. It's like 2012. Right? Yep. Well, all sorts of people say in 2012, the Mayans were telling the end of the world was coming. (laughs) But it really wasn't the end of the world. It was the end of one shift, one period of the world one alignment, right? Mm-hmm. One paradigm. And as you move into a new paradigm, that growth or maturity, it's the same thing in the tobacco industry. And if you know anything about your estate, you know that we ain't, we ain't in the backside of where things are moving. We're going to get fucked one way or another with legislation and this and that, sure. But let me tell you something. We're doing things that are very interesting and I think some people are going to be shocked to say them least. Nice. Probably me and my bank account the worst <laughs> shot. <laughs> uh, uh, let's, see. let's see. Tad said he wants to know is uh, is there any chance of a, a T-52 coming out on a Lancero or is it just the tobacco is too thick to, to produce that size? Huh? It's out, man, the L40. There you go, Tad, the L40. Liga Pravada L40. Uh, we did the release at Casa de Monte Cristo in Chicago and the Nat Sherman. That was up to 2012, and we just shipped. Uh, we have 40 boxes coming in next week of the L40s. So we shipped out about uh, 400 boxes at the end of 2011, and um, uh, now... You can you can start to you can look for them. You have to really go to not just an authorized Liga Pravada account, but you have to really. Oh, let me tell you what to do. <laughs> let me tell you what to do. All right, Tad, listen, he's going to help you out. What's his name? Tad, T A D, Tad, Abraxas eight two eight two eight two on Twitter. Tad. Tad, T A D. What kind of fucking name is Tad? <laughs> you tell him, Jonathan. Hey, it's his mama gave him that name now. Well, God bless his mama. <laughs> I love everybody's mother. So listen, uh, if you go, if you have the iPhone or the or the i i uh, the iPad, go to your go to where you have what's called your apps, and put in your app Drew Space Estate. 
and you'll see our new app that just got released a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago. And then you can click in your state, okay? When you go into the, when you get the True State app, it's for free. Then you can click in that thing, and you can say, let's say you live in uh, Maryland, and you can go to Maryland and say, find Drew Estate Cigars wherever, but or just find Liga Pravada. We made that also on there, so you can just just start calling Liga Pravada stores, all right, and start to ask them, you got any L40s? And uh, if you find them, some of the stores they don't sell them by the box; they sell them by the twos or threes, but. You can find them if you look around for them. Uh, right now, they're probably very hard to find because we shipped out uh, the first batch uh, was uh, right after the new year. So, yeah, it's possible you can find some. There wasn't many. It was like 400 boxes or something like that. Now there's another 40 boxes coming out. L40, it's a 40 ring as opposed to a 38. And that one, uh, I think I have that one over here. Bear with me. Second. He's off and running. Mike, I got your message too. I'm frozen, but we'll just let it go. Fuck it. Don't worry about it. As long as they can hear us, that's what fucking it is. Yeah. Uh, well, hang in there, guys. It looks like it's going to definitely be a, a, a long show tonight. I hear you. No, it's not going to be that much longer. It was my mother's birthday yesterday, and she wasn't feeling good. So today she's feeling a little better, and I'm going to have to take her out. I'm going to stay on for about another five to ten minutes. That's sweet. But let me tell you something. I would love to stay on longer, and I'll tell you what. I, I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how impressed I am, how, how much I'm impressed with what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. For me especially, again, because it's, I'm not that guy to be at a lot of events each year. I usually do about 12 to 15 events a year. This year I did about 25 because of the, the elections in Nicaragua. But uh, I think this is a great outlet for people to be able to ask questions and kind of, you know, Man, I'd be pumped if I could see, you know, what uh, Carlito Fuente's personal, you know, uh, area looks like or, or Orlando. Oh, Orlando Padron I talk to every day on the phone, but I'm saying, like, guys who I don't know as well. So I think it's pretty cool that you guys, what you're doing, I think it's a great, a great contribution to the industry. And that's what I was talking to you about earlier. Yep. Nobody is better than you. It's not that way. What you're doing is special. It's unique, and it's it's creating a a uh, an opportunity for people to to see where your talents are and setting up a, a video program like this. I mean, I just think it's super cool. You know, for people who have an interest in Drew Estate or for what we do, this is cool for them. For guys such as myself who have an interest in 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 other products, with I'm a bourbon guy and beer guy, so you know, I love to be able to do this with shit with the bourbon stuff. This would be cool as hell. Yeah, we could. We'll definitely, definitely have you back on, Jonathan. Absolutely. And if you want, whatever you want to talk about, and we'll, nice, we'll talk about it. Dude, and I'm glad that helped me working through how to uh, how to um, uh, do this the right way. No this, this will really worked out well. What other? Well, no, I was going to say, and even uh, like if you're in uh, Nicaragua, a lot of the time, if you have internet connection in Nicaragua, we can even do it from there. I mean, yep. Skype is worldwide. That would be. Yep, we can do it wherever you want to do it. That was um, good. I had one major question. For sure, you guys. go. Let's see, I was very disappointed. Uh oh. I was very disappointed that <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys read smooth? <laughs> Very disappointed that she got number ten, Nikki. <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> I, my girl Nikki. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Summer was good. She was strong. <laughs> I can't wait to see the letters from the FCC and everything else <laughs> we're going to get after this. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> We're all good with it, brother. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll take them head on. We're not afraid. 
It wasn't me, man. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was the man behind the goggles. <laughs> That's some kind of trap. Man. That was entrapment. <laughs> no, in all honesty, she should have got number one. They totally screwed it up because how could they even think? <laughs> Uh, you guys like smooth, right? Never even heard of it. What's that? You never heard never of smooth? Heard of yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, Jonathan, before before we go, to, Chief Hava sent a message out on Twitter. He wants to oh. know about tuna steak. Well, tuna steak's all right. We, you know, we're, <laughs> we're working on tuna steak right now. I really couldn't throw them away. It was really difficult. So I have a whole plan going on for tuna steak right now, a whole re knitting a whole re knitting going on. But, uh, hey, you know what? Let me conclude with a couple of things. First of all, I really appreciate this. I'm, you know, you guys know I'm goofing around with the, with smooth <laughs> or sweet. <laughs> right? That's just having fun and goofing around stuff. But, you know, Drew Estate, we're, we're blue-collar guys, all right, to be honest with you. We have a good time. We have a lot of fun. There's great camaraderie with, the, you know, all the guys and girls in the company. But what we do, we take it very seriously. And we've been blessed to have the opportunity to uh, continue to grow our company and to watch all the guys rising up in the company and being creative and being talented. So a lot of the guys, you know, I just really appreciate, you know, everybody giving Drew Estate a chance and for uh, for making part us part of, of their rotation of smoking because some of these people watching this or uh, being part of the, the chat, they definitely have been, I don't like to use the word supporting Drew Estate because it's a weird word, but definitely have been part of what we've tried to, to do and they let us know when we mess up too. So I just want to sincerely thank everybody for uh, the great opportunity. And uh, I want to say uh, stay away from Jersey, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to see him. I got a bunch of bloggers coming out. We have two really good blogger groups coming out cool. to Nicaragua. So if you guys want to do the Cigar Safari, let me know. Uh, reach out over here to the uh, to the office and, okay. and uh, speak with Johnny Brook. Okay. All right. Uh, John Brook, he's on Facebook, Drew Estate. Send them a direct message. All right? Yep. And also, you guys can just touch base with me and we'll put you over through to him. But, um, no, nah, man, I, I think that's the right way to conclude right there. Oh, uh, we can't let you conclude like that. What's up? I have, you, I have to ask this question. What do you and got? you're one of the guys I'm pretty confident is going to answer, and then we can end it. But we got to end it this way. It would be the you only. Want the it would be the only right way. Here, here's the question. You ready? Rob, our buddy Rob, who's on Twitter, General Griff, wants to know. And we don't ask this question of everybody, but we're going to ask it of you. You're on an island, stranded. You got to marry one, kill one, and have sex with one. Oprah, Barbara Walters, or your your girlfriend and your wife, your wife if you're married, whatever. Pick one, pick one for each. Go. <laughs> Adios, boys. Jonathan, thanks a lot, brother. We appreciate it, man. You know what to do? What's that? I said, you know what to do? This, right? <laughs> worried about Oprah. <laughs> She's busy counting her billions. Yeah. Billions. Billions. We're over here trying to figure out how to pay the water bill. <laughs> Don't worry about Oprah on a desert island. <laughs> right? Who asked that question? General Griff on Twitter. Oh, I blew that guy's ear up one time also. His ear was bleeding. <laughs> we were done with him. Bleeding. All right. All right. You guys saw these, these ears, Trace? Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. This kid, oh. The Drew Estate app. On the iPhone and on the iPad, and it's coming now for the Droid. Any Droid? That's oh, no. Right. I was going to ask nice, because man. I have I have the real phone, an Android phone. I was just wondering when it was when oh, it was coming fuck. on. There. Here we go. Coming three weeks, three weeks, and then also. So isn't the, a virus coming with it? Anything <laughs> Windows operated? You want a virus? <laughs> <laughs> All 
What? So then, other than that, you got www.cigarsafari.com, right? Yep. And then, uh, you have drewestate.com. And also, as you guys know, we're the distributor for Hoya de Nicaragua. Yep. And uh, Cabinetta is awesome. Our guy over there. That Cabinetta huh? is awesome. Let me tell you, the cabinet is a nice stick. They got some good sticks over there, and now you have uh, Jose Blanco. Yeah. Yep. You know he he's come on board. I think he's executive vice president now with Cuenca. So that's pretty cool. We get to we'll, we'll be seeing them on the fourteenth. We fly out to Nicaragua. We have the whole crew going out. How do you like that? What was that sound? I don't know. Somebody chatted us or something. I think. I don't know. Uh, it's probably yeah, probably. <laughs> Do you know where Jonathan Drew is? All right, well, <laughs> all right Jonathan, we'll let right. you go, brother, man. Thanks a lot. We appreciate hey, it. Hey, guys, stay in touch. Thank you so much. And God will. bless you, okay? You got God it. Thank you, brother. families and smoke in moderation. None of these seven and eight cigars a day. <laughs> That's not right. Smoke in moderation, everything in moderation. Right. God bless Thanks, you, guys. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. See Have ya. a good one, buddy. All right, guys. Take all care. Right. See you. All right. Now it's just me here. Um, and and. No, they can't hear you, Mike, I don't believe. Go ahead and say something. Say hi. No, see, you guys can't hear him. He thinks you can hear him. But I could just leave it like this, and you would never have to hear him again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll bring my uh, partner in crime back here. Uh, let's, oops. Man, what a here. show. There huh? he is. There we go. Hey, everybody. Oh, All right. Man, what a show. What a show. We could have, I think the show could have went on for four hours. Oh, that, that was awesome, though. I mean, I, I've. Holy shit, the, man. Awesome show. The Great knowledge guy. he has. Really, yeah. knowledge. Yeah, I agree with you. The knowledge was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, it, was, uh, it, it was really, really a nice, a nice show. And like I said, I did not know, you know, everything he was talking about i mean i'm i don't know everything in the cigar industry i haven't been in it long enough to know it oh not not even close to what what he knew but uh what a great guest we'll have him back on for you guys because we didn't even touch i want to apologize to uh, john g he asked a question i never got it in uh there was a few other questions i didn't get in so guys we'll we'll get jonathan back on and uh we'll we'll, we'll go after those other questions and uh we'll go from there i want to thank everybody in the chat room Sorry for, uh, it looked like we had some technical difficulties. I know Rob and Corey had a problem getting on the site. Uh, sorry about that. My video went. Don't know what happened there. But, uh, again, thanks to everybody. Thanks to East Coast Cigars. Thanks to Rodrigo Cigars for continuing their support. They're back on this year to continue with ad-free. I want to thank and, them and so we, much. If you and, saw with our, our nice four shot now, Matt yeah. actually threw that together for us right before the show started that we could have uh, the East Coast logo and the Rodrigo Cigar logo right up on the screen when we're broadcasting to you all so you can see them. Yeah, yeah, went good, went good. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So I'm going to get my ass out of here because I need to go to Lowe's and buy kitchen <laughs> cabinets. So uh, everybody, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. And the next show is uh, next Saturday at 1 p.m. We will have Mike from El Tiante cigars on so make sure you guys join us there also will be a nice giveaway yep. thanks to those guys as well so, so that's about live. it so see us all right we'll see everybody then thanks guys appreciate it